Okay, uh, this is the Pythagorean comma showing that the 12 note scale actually does not close. And, and um, you'll find the same image from traditional Chinese music tuning because the Pythagorean scale is pretty much the same as the Chinese traditional scale. But this is also the same image for the small universe meditation. So the, the, this is the, the head. So when you start the small universe, you have the, um, the uh, lower dantian is one, the bladder is two, the perineum, perineum is three, the tip of the tailbone is four, the base of the spine is five, the kidneys is six, the um, top of the spine is seven, the base of the skull is eight, the top of the skull is nine, the third eye is ten, the throat is eleven, and the heart is twelve. <clears throat> and then that brings you back to the lower dantian, which is behind behind the navel. And so I want to get into the mathematics of this Pythagorean theorem because they cover up, they, they don't talk about non-commutativity. So this is like the wiki, Wikipedia page, which is supposed to be like the definitive page here. So you, they give you this ratio. Now this ratio is of 53, 1, 4, 4, 1 over 524288 that ratio is directly from philolaeus of um pre of pre socratic or uh, ancient greece it's uh, around socrates time so then they they show this value here which would be 3 halves to the 12th as uh, 2 to the 7th which is 2 would be your octaves now, um, what they're not explaining is that this, the only way to derive this um, as this ratio is to ignore the non-commutativity of the perfect fourth with the perfect fifth. And that's the, um, that's the, the real reason that the, um, that the circle of fifths doesn't Normally, this would be taught as the circle of fifths in music theory, where you have the 12 notes. So you'd have, they go as a perfect fifth. So it would be uh, C, G, D, A, E, F, or uh, B, F sharp, C sharp, um, G sharp, um, D sharp, and then A sharp, and then E sharp, which is F, and then that would take you back to C. So that's assuming you're having equal tempered tuning so that the E sharp is equal to the F, but in the Pythagorean tuning, it's not equal. So this is how they derive this, um, this number, this ratio from Philolaeus. Now what, what they're not explaining is that in order to flip this division around he had to change the value of the one of the root tonic, the one, and that's the whole secret. So what I discovered is that if you, they give here, now this is the sleight of the hand in the mathematics. They have three to the 12th divided by two to the 19th, and that's from Phil Leis. And so this is the number you get from, for the Pythagorean, the value of the Pythagorean comma. Now, if you go up here, they show the ratio as 3 halves to the 12th divided by um, 
2 to the 7th. Now if you do that number, you get a, this is not, you get a different um, value than 1.0.1364. Because they're not, here they're including the, um, the uh, 2 to the 19th, they're adding this, um, see this is, this, this, they're, they're, okay, they're calling it 1.5 to the 12, but it's actually 3 halves to the 12 as the perfect fifth. So by saying 1.5, they're removing that denominator of the ratio. By removing the denominator, they're hiding the fact that it is non-commutative. So if you study Alain Kahn, the field medalist, he, it, you have to really study him. This is what I figured out. You know, he's pointing out that actually when you reverse this ratio, like here they have the, the ratio reversed for to, to multiply. So you, you invert this so you get 2 to the... 19th and 3 to the 12th. But what he's saying is that actually it is, in order to bring this um, tuning back into the logarithm, what it actually is, it's 3 to the 1 19th and 2 to the 1 12th. And that's not what, and that's what they're not telling you, is that by making it 3 to the 1 19th and 2 to the 1 12th, because the 2 to the 1 12th is your logarithmic uh, ratio for the equal temper tuning. You're, they're, they're, you're revealing that it's non-commutative. And that's why if you use, if you actually use this um, 3 halves to the 12th, um, like right here, 3 halves to the 12th divided by 2 to the 17th, you do not get the same value of 1.03164 right here. You get a different value for that. So this is, that's the error. That's a mathematical lie right there. And it, and they're just, they, they think it doesn't matter because they're, they're not acknowledging the non-commutative ratios. So if you go down here, they go down to the scale. Now here's the key point, is they're assuming a zero for the one one frequency ratio. And so they're, so when they say it's a zero octave, well, what does that mean? Can you have a zero octave? I mean, I've never heard of a, a zero octave before, but what they're what they're trying to point out is that what they really mean is that the octave is inherently squared. So at the first octave with the, f the frequency ratio of one to two, this ratio is actually a the, um, the square root. You have to use the double octave of t so that the, this frequency of two is actually the um, assuming that it's squared that the octave value is squared because here you square you square two 